Hey Cypress, you've been inviting us into your home for the last several months, so Douglas and the band and I thought it would only be right to invite you into ours for a weekend of worship. So this weekend, the band and Douglas and myself, we're all at home, so let's join in together for some home worship. And put me back together 
And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. seen them all and you still call me friend cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley and there's not a place your mercy and grace will find me again
and outshine you No power can defeat you, God. Another one is holy. Another one is high and lifted up, God. You are. Victorious, victorious. Oh, you are holy. Oh, you are worthy. From the dawn of time. Victorious, victorious God, you are my God, you're glorious, you're glorious God. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cyprus Online. We're so glad that you've chosen to connect with us this morning. If you're watching on our Facebook page, go ahead and put in the comments where you're watching from and who you're watching with. And if you're not watching on our website, go ahead and do that same thing in the chat window. Also on our website, you'll see a Bible button where you can follow along with the scripture for the day. And there's also a live prayer button that'll connect you with a host who would love to pray with you. And if this is your first time with us, welcome. We are so glad you chose to check us out. And we trust you're having a great time in the service so far. We would like to ask you to go ahead and take a next step for us. Would you do us a favor and complete a digital connection card? That'll give us an opportunity to reach out and get to know you just a little bit better. And when you do, we'll make a donation to a local food pantry on your behalf. You'll find a link to that connection card in the chat window right now. Thanks, Tyler. And thanks to all of my kiddos who connect with me each week on Zoom at 1030. I love seeing all your smiling faces each week, and I have so much fun when we get to play our games and do our different activities we've been doing. I'd love to have more kids join us. It's every Sunday at 1030 on Zoom. Also, make sure you're checking out the weekly lesson videos by visiting our Kids Church page and follow me on Instagram at Cypress Meadows Kids, where I'll post different ideas for parents to use throughout the week, the monthly memory verses, and any reminders about upcoming events and things that we'll be doing. Thanks, Brooke. And students, we had an awesome time at Tree Hoppers yesterday. I'm so sore, as usual. And if you missed it, don't sweat it. There'll be more events rolling out real soon. Uh, in the meantime, make sure you follow us on Instagram, CM Student Ministry, to stay connected. You'll find messages and devotions on our Instagram page that are geared just for our middle school and high school students.
And adults, there are always plenty of ways for you to connect at Cypress as well. You know, this past weekend, we had an awesome Saturday on the lawn. A bunch of you guys came out. Then we had the Habits of Jesus class on Tuesday night. But still, we've got our Tuesday morning grocery pickup. We've got our cafe nights on Wednesday nights and other events coming down the pipeline constantly. So make sure you text the word events to 727 291 4491 for more information about events and to sign up. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Cyprus this past week, I received a thank you that I want to pass on to you. Uh, somebody called me to tell me that they've been going through a particularly hard time during this pandemic and it was reaching a bit of a crisis point and they were praying and sort of crying out to God, asking God to please speak to them, speak into the situation. And so they dialed into Cyprus online and watched our service and they called me to say, uh, I listened and I felt like God was speaking directly to me about my situation. And I said to him, well, he was. <laughs> and isn't it amazing and wonderful how much God loves us, so much so that with all that's going on in this world, he would hear your cries and see your situation, cause you to dial into Cyprus Online, and then speak directly to you. And I just want to say this. Uh, to the whole Cypress family, and maybe this is God speaking directly to you at this moment, but thank you for giving, and thank you for staying faithful during this pandemic, because your giving that makes these services possible, that make moments like this possible for this person who called me. So Cypress, thanks for your faithfulness, thanks for giving, and now uh, Tyler is going to tell us how we can give during this time. Thanks, Douglas. There are four easy ways to continue to give. You can text giving to 727-275-8783. You can visit cypressmeadows.org slash giving. You can drop your offering in the mail, or you can swing by and drop it off to us here at the church. Well, it's time to continue in this week's service. Let's get ready to hear from Douglas. Welcome to Cypress Online, and uh, welcome to Jackie's in my home, and, uh, and in particular, welcome into our kitchen. I'm uh, glad that you're here with us today. Um, this place, this space right here, it really is the, the hub of our household. It's where our family and our friends gather, and there are so many wonderful memories of joy and laughter and fun in this space, even dancing. Uh, my Jackie will occasionally put on some music and then invite me to dance with her in the kitchen. She's such a wonderful Jackie. Uh, but anyway, uh, this the, the floor in this kitchen and in our family room is made of uh, satilio tile. And the story behind this tile is that when we were uh, first building this home decades ago now, uh, it took like every single diamond penny we had just to get in the front door. And so we had no margin to do any extras or upgrades as we were building this. And so our contractor was offering us uh, some very inexpensive, cheap, really vinyl flooring. You're just going to kind of roll out on the place. And either one of us wanted that. And so we began to uh, look and to search, like, what do we have that could raise a little extra money for us? In the process of the searching, I came across this beautiful Converse shoebox from the 60s. And inside of it is all of my baseball card collection when I was a kid. And so I opened it up and I found people like Mickey Mantle and uh, Hank Aaron, Joe Torre and uh, Ernie Banks, all kinds of wonderful all-stars. And I also found in here, not one, but two Nolan Ryan rookie cards, which were valued at $1,700 a piece. And so I quickly sold them and uh, then voila, we have the tile floor in this house. It's remarkably beautiful, but we've discovered it's also very, very unforgiving. Uh, and the latest victim on our floor uh, was a jar of olives. I had opened up the door uh, to our fridge, pulled out the olives, slipped out of my hand, crashed on the floor, and olive juice and olives and shattered glass just scattered everywhere on the floor. So we spent more than a few moments um, mopping up all the juice and the olives, and then we swept and vacuumed the floor, I think, twice, because we have seven grandchildren who run around here barefoot, and Jackie and I have been known to go barefoot around this place as well. And so we simply viewed all this broken glass as nothing more than a dangerous mess that had to be dealt with. Um, now, it's interesting to note uh, that our perspective is that, you know, the broken glass is nothing more than a dangerous mess. An artist looks at the same 
broken mess and see something of beauty. This uh, jar, or this vase that I have here, uh, is something that an artist once is made out of broken glass. An artist saw a pile of broken glass, didn't see it as a dangerous mess, but saw it as the material for something beautiful, melted it down, did a little glass blowing and shaping with all their tools, and created this beautiful, unique, one-of-a-kind, gorgeous jar or, or vase. Perspective is just everything, isn't it? Uh, is our perspective is nothing more than a dangerous mess, or our perspective is material to create something beautiful? Well, uh, for three weeks now, we've been talking about perspective here at Cyprus, and we're going to continue talking about this today. And today, what we're going to talk about is messes and messes uh, that are in our life, and how God has this incredible and amazing way of, of taking the worst of our messes and then using it as the material to create a, a masterpiece. Because with God, there is no mess that is ever wasted in his beautiful, strong, artistic hands. Um, and so there are so many examples of this throughout Scripture of how God does this work. One of my favorite is how God did this in the life of Moses. And uh, so because Moses is my favorite, and I think he's one of my favorites because he was a stutterer like me, we're going to go to the life of Moses and see how God did this in his life. Now, his life has an epic ending, if you know his story. Uh, but it's a longer story than an epic ending. His life has this horrific beginning and this very uh, mundane middle, but it ends in such a beautiful way. And the story of Moses is retold for us in the book of Acts chapter 7, and it's told by a guy by the name of Stephen, who is speaking to the Jewish high court. Rather, he's really more preaching at them than he is speaking to them. Anyway, this is the only speech of Stephen we have recorded in Scripture, and it's the only speech we have recorded because when he was finished, he so offended the religious leaders, they had him stoned to death. Uh, we pastors would say, a remarkably bad day at the office. All right, let's read this story of Moses as Stephen tells us, Acts chapter 7, uh, beginning in verse number 20. The scriptures say this, At that time Moses was born, and he was no ordinary child. For three months he was cared for in his father's house. When he was placed outside, Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up as her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would, recognize, would realize and recognize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? And when Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight, as he went over to look more closely, he heard the Lord's voice. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and didn't dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, take off your sandals. The place where you are standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groanings and have come down to set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses whom they had rejected with the words, who made you ruler and judge? He was sent to be the ruler and deliverer by God himself through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out of Egypt and did wonders and miraculous signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the desert. This is that Moses who told the Israelites, God will send you a prophet like me from your own people. Now, there are so much in this story and so many layers to this story that I just absolutely love. And one of them is it is so totally unexpected. I mean, we know the end of the story. 
So we know how, um, how it moves along. But if you didn't know the, the story and you did, were not aware of the ending, there is this unexpected, unusual twist that takes place towards the end of his life. And I think it's just a wonderful, wonderful reminder for us that um, it's, it's not how you start and that how you start doesn't have to be how you end. Uh, God and his work in our lives can change our stories. And I think it's also a wonderful reminder that God can take the worst messes in our life and he can create something remarkably, stunningly beautiful. All right, let's go to the opening phrase. The opening phrase of this narrative says this, at that time. And what it really means is it was an absolutely unthinkably horrible time to be born a Hebrew male in that time and in that place. Now, have you ever felt uh, like, like where you were born and who you were born to just simply set you up for disadvantages in life? And if you've just been born at a different time and maybe had different parents and maybe a different family upbringing, that you could be something so much more with the course of your life. But where you were born and who you were born to set you up for nothing more than disadvantages. Well, if you can relate to that, you can relate to Moses. Because when the scripture says, at that time, what it's saying to us is that the Pharaoh who was ruling Egypt at that time was a man who either was unaware of or had forgotten the history of his country and how God had blessed the entire nation of Egypt because of the Hebrews who were in their midst. And so he began to view them simply as a threat to his ruling and a threat to the country. And so he subjected all of the Hebrews into forced labor, slavery, and then he practiced infanticide with all the Hebrew babies who were born male. Horribly, absolutely. There just aren't the words. It's so unthinkable. I have two sons and I have three grandsons. And I could not begin to imagine the terror of what these Hebrews were going through at this moment. And verse number 21 says this, when referring to Moses, when he was placed outside. Now, this phrase has absolutely so much texture to it because what he is saying that his parents made this calculated decision uh, that they when he was born that they would put him in a basket and then place the basket in the river and then say uh, uh, say a prayer that he would not become a meal for crocodiles or that he would somehow drown and just ask God to somehow do something miraculous in this moment so he was placed outside because there was no safe place for him inside and if that's your best option, I don't think any of the options sound good to you. And so then who should find him? But Pharaoh's daughter. I mean, uh, think of this. Uh, the daughter of the very man who had signed an edict for his death. And so the, the, the very man who had commanded Moses' death now became his protector at this moment. And so he is raised by a, a surrogate mother and uh, with a grandfather who had wished him dead. And you think you had a messy home life. You think you had a dysfunctional upbringing. And you think that because of how messy your home life was or dysfunctional that your family was, uh, that nothing beautiful can happen in your life. And so here is Moses, who is a Hebrew who was raised as an Egyptian. And he finds himself being fully accepted in either word. Because the Hebrews, even though he's a Hebrew, don't want to accept him because he was raised Egyptian. And the Egyptians don't want to accept him because, well, he was raised an Egyptian, but he actually is a, a Hebrew by his bloodline. And so he found himself in this identity crisis, like, who am I really? Who am I? Because nobody seems to want to accept me as, as, as one of their own in this moment. And Moses was placed outside, the scripture says. But with God, I want us to know, with God, I want us to know that no mess, no mess in our life ever has to be wasted. And sometimes we think that um, our life is just way too much of a mess, a broken, shattered mess for God to do anything good or beautiful with us. That our lives started out with such a deficit, such a disadvantage that nothing good, nothing good could ever become of us. Please, I want us to just know and say it again, that with God, absolutely, positively, no mess we ever create or no mess that ever is forced upon our lives 
is fatal. This is the material that God uses to create something beautiful in us. So Moses was placed outside. Ever feel like an outsider? (laughs) Maybe because of the message you've created with your life? And maybe, just maybe, you should also consider that maybe, just maybe, God has allowed you to be placed an outsider because God wants to do something outside the box with and through you. And maybe the the very uh, failures, mistakes, disappointments, and shaming things, messes that you made with your life, maybe, just maybe, these things that have kind of placed you outside are the very markers God wants to use uh, to reach the people who carry the same scars in their life that you carry in your life. That, that our pain and our, our brokenness, our disappointments, they're not wasted. This is the very material God uses to create something beautiful in our lives. Okay, if uh, the mess Moses is in is not messy enough, he actually does something to make his life even messier. Have you ever found that moment where you thought, like, my situation cannot possibly get any messier. And then you do something remarkably stupid or dumb that makes your life even messier. Verse number 23, the scriptures say this, uh, that when Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian. So he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Anybody think this is a great idea? Anybody think that maybe... This suddenly made Moses' life better. (laughs) Moses' life only went from messy to unbelievably messy by this action he took. Because now the Israelites don't trust him and don't want him around. Because who wants to put their trust in a self-righteous murderer who had just put all of his people in a jeopardized position by his action? And now Pharaoh is not very excited about him either and wants to call him into the court for a conversation. And so his very attempt to fix the mess that he made only broke up things more and made it even messier. So verse number 29. When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled in a, uh, as a foreigner and had two sons. And this phrase, where he settled. I mean, so much is said here. It just shouts at me when I read it. I think it's telling us this, that some of us have this idea, this belief that our life is such a mess. What we've done is created such a mess with our life that there is no hope for a better future. There's just no chance for beauty or for good for us. Uh, we, We think so. We should just acknowledge and accept. We've created a mess or we've been born in a mess, we're living in a mess, and it's what it's always going to be. So we should just learn to accept it. This is who I am. My worst moments define my entire life. Uh, Beauty, creativity, good. It's for somebody else. It's it's not for me. But with God, the the Scripture is telling us, and the story Moses is telling us, but with God, no mess, no failure, is so great that God cannot create something beautiful out of it. And so for the next 40 years, Moses lived as a fugitive in a foreign land. 40 years, four decades, he lived as a foreigner in a distant land. Ever make a mess? And then you feel like your mess has cost you your future? That it is so large and so fatal and so final that you have no real hope to ever dream again about the the life you've longed for. And you have this understanding like Moses did. And you know what? I've got nobody to blame for this mess but me. This mess has been a mess so long. It's set. There's no salvaging this one. And so you just have to settle. And you settle for the idea, the concept, that you really truly are defined by your worst moment. But friends, the only way to leave the past the past and to move on is to let go of it and to allow God with his hands to create a new future. Verse number 30. After 40 years had passed, 
And the angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. And God speaks to him and God informs him, I am the God of your forefathers and I have seen their suffering and I have heard their groanings of his people. In verse 34, God says, and I have come down to set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. Moses, Moses, let's go back to the mess. Let's go back to that rip-roaring mess. And together we're going to create something that is remarkably beautiful. And I love how uh, Stephen says this in verse number 35. This is the same Moses. That is, he's emphasizing something here. This is the very same Moses who was born in an absolute mess who does this beautiful thing. This is the very same Moses uh, who created a world of mess himself. This is the very same Moses who was a murderer, the very same Moses who had an identity crisis, the very same Moses who ran for his life, the very same Moses who stuttered, the very same Moses who lived in exile for 40 years. This is the same person. This same person, this messy person, is the one that God used to set his people free. And I think that God is saying to Moses in the course of this moment, here you were thinking that your mess, it was irrevocable, unchangeable. It was always going to stay a broken, dangerous mess. But God is taking all of the mess and all of the failures and all of the shame and all the moments he thought he would never get back and all the fear and all the doubt, all the worst decisions of his life. And God is saying, you are not stuck here. That with God, even the biggest mess ups can the, become the material for that which is beautiful and that which is good and that which brings greatness into the world. And I really believe that God looks at you and God looks at me and God is saying to us, come, let's go. Come, let's go. Let's just pick up the pieces. And together we're going to create something remarkably beautiful and remarkably good. It's there for you. I, sometimes, friends, I think if we could just get the perspective and see ourselves as God sees us, or if we could just see ourselves as Jesus sees us, it would blow your mind because we think it's just not possible because we think that our mess is irrevocable, too broken, too many mistakes. And I think God is just waiting for us to put our life in his hands, our mess in his hands. And God says, come, let's go. Come, let's go. Let's create something that is beautiful. Put all the broken pieces in, in the hands of the divine artist and let him use it to create something that is so remarkably beautiful. It's perspective perspective. What is it? Messy, broken pieces that are good only for the garbage. Or is it the material that God uses to create something that is remarkably beautiful and wonderful? Uh, Cyprus, I'm going to invite you to pray with me here. Before we pray, uh, you know, if you're, if you're watching and you have this sense, oh man, I need God. I need God to take the broken pieces of my messes and to move me from darkness to light. I, I need God to take the broken pieces of my life and to move me from despair to hope, to move me from shame to forgiveness, to move me from brokenness in, in the, into beauty. And you're ready to put your life in His hands. It really just begins by saying, Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I give you my life. And there is a whole conversation over a lifetime that you and God are going to be having. And there's going to be all kinds of wonderful ways He's going to go to work to shape and fashion you. They do something beautiful in your life. But it all begins with a conversation. Jesus, I give you my life. And if you've not done that and you're ready to give Him your life, just give Him all the pieces of your life and watch what beautiful good that He can do. All right, Cyprus, let's, let's pray together. Oh God, would you fill us now with, your, with hope and joy and life and love. Help us to see, and not to see, but help us to, to, to believe and to live our life in such a way that, that no mess is ever wasted in your hands. That is just the material that you use to create something extraordinary and something beautiful. Jesus, we just put our lives into your hands. Amen. Amen. Cyprus, may the Lord bless and keep you this week. And we'll join together next weekend on Cyprus Online.